It is Friday, February 25th, and James Burgess, on the last chess video, you said, yes, 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 yes. I've been binge watching your old chess videos. I'm not that great at it, but I just love the relaxed feel of the, those videos you made. Uh, I really hope you start to do more chess vids. Um, I, I'm not entirely clear on how much of a regular thing this is going to be, but I did reach out to Eric uh, Hansen, who's a great Canadian grandmaster. He's part of Chess Bras. And I had a bunch of you guys recommend that I do uh, some kind of a collaboration with him. So I reached out to him. He said he was down. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that sometime next week, and I'm not sure when those videos are up. So hopefully I can get into contact with some grandmasters with some degree of regularity, because I really, really enjoy these videos. I get a lot out of them personally. I just played some chess last night, and uh, it was the first time I'd played since playing with Tal. And uh, I was playing a lot better. I was asking myself all the questions that he was asking me when I was playing those games. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. These videos for me are a lot of fun and I hope you enjoy them. A whole month can be ruined because of one move. Uh, that's, yeah, this game is torturous. Yeah, exactly. She's a fickle so, mistress. Okay, we have some stronger position here. Okay, so I know it's painful, but we don't have to rush. That's uh, what I do. When I lose, I start playing faster and it's very important to slow down. And avoid tilting now does he have a threat no threat all right so what we want to do is develop right yes okay so you can develop however you wish i will not uh, give you my preference um as long as you put pieces in the center again no threat how but, do you develop but he's got a he's got a threat later on to um Try yeah, but a4 is not developing anything. I would have preferred to play e3 and protect the pawn with the bishop uh, anyway. Okay. But still, it's, it's not it's not too bad. So now, mm, no threat. So let's develop. By the way, we like to develop knights first. Okay. And uh, yeah, usually. And now again, no threat. Let's develop the bish. The bish. <laughs> All right, let's do that. The mighty bish. <laughs> now, all right, let's castle. Let's go. Yes. All right. He this this guy likes to play fast, doesn't he? He likes to play passively. That's what I think. And so uh, well, now no threats. And now let me let me give you a, a small hint. Um, normally, um, you want to develop your rooks, your queen. Can you anticipate which file will be open soon? D file. The E file and also? No, no, the, the D file, I said. Ah, uh, the D file is possible if he has a pawn break, but now there is like your C4 pawn and his D5 pawn are kind of attacking each other. So sooner oh, or later. Okay, okay, okay. All right. I see sooner or you... later, the C file will open. So you can. Yeah, exactly. You got it. I don't have to say it even. Yep. I just have to think it and you will find it. Yeah? Yes. Well, I think that's just what happens with genius. With, with geniuses, it just makes sense. Yeah. Know? So now he wants to develop his bish once again. There's <laughs> no way to prevent it. But, uh, well, now it's the queen's turn to join the party. Sorry. And this is also good. No, this is good. This is good. This is why we gathered here on the C file. And actually, he shouldn't have taken with the pawn. Because now, maybe you can exploit the fact that you're leading by development by trying to penetrate his position knight speaking to of b, knight, to, knight to b5 how about that yeah baby um what is your threat by the way my threat is to fork his bishop and rook um but the bishop is is not the piece that okay now you can you can kind of do what you said yeah. but your your threat was knight c7 forking two rooks but now you have a pleasant choice both of them are kind of uh Oh Tempting, yeah, this is, this is but but it would be better just to get that that bishop, right? I mean, if you can win a bishop, it's better, yeah. I can still do Both. I I can still fork the two rooks here, but I think it would be better cuz cuz I would sack up I would get down on the ex or he would be down on the exchange, but if I were to just get his bishop straight up, that's three pawns instead of two. I'm going to do it this exactly. way. I'm doing it this way. Lovely. And yeah, and he w assuming he's a good player, he will not uh, overlook the bishop, but he has to waste the tempo defending it. And then you can take the rook, for example. And you kind of gain the tempo in this particular 
to move knight d6 that you played. So now, of course, his semi-threat was to go away with the rook. So you captured it. And now, does he have a threat? He does not, no. He's got a real okay, so shit position Which here. piece wants to join the party very badly? My bishop. My bish. I, they already moved. What? So you want to treat everyone equally, right? My the queen on the one. My queen. My queen. My queen. Especially my queen. women. You don't want to mess with them. My queen. So, All right, where do I want to put yeah. I want to put her, uh, how about B3? That looks like a solid spot. Yes. You think? Yes. All right, we're doing Yeah, it. definitely. All right. That's what I was thinking. So now, uh, okay, he kind of has an idea. It's not a big threat, but he wants to probably move with the pawn to e4 and grab space. And space is important in chess. So probably because you're leading in development, uh, opening up the position should be in your favor. So And also exchanging is in your favor because you're up an exchange, a rook versus a knight. So... Yeah, now I'm. I want you to notice some tactical factor of that in the position. Um. What? Which? What do you? A tactical factor? Yeah, you need to kind of uh, spot that some pieces are hanging in a certain. This is something that can only be improved by by uh, playing often and and practicing your your skills on tactics uh, trainers, but. I will just mention that some of his pieces are hanging and you can exploit it. You can take three minutes for the next move if you feel like it, but uh, just... Uh, okay, some of his pieces are hanging. Um... I don't... I don't know. So it's not too easy to spot, but um, I'll give you a little hint. So he, he, he has two pieces in the same, it's called a skewer in chess, like. Okay, okay, same, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, I, don't, I know what a skewer is. line, I will not even oh, say. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Line. What about a, well, what about a pin? Are you talking about? A pin, it's like a pin, but if you play uh, the move that you're thinking, I'm assuming immediately, he might be able to get away with oh, it. Oh, I see what you mean because of my queen. He can check. He can capture the... Exactly. He can have an intermediate check. So there is a way to... Um, it's possible. I, I, I'm, I have to compliment you for this move, but the, just mentioning the move I was thinking of was knight takes e5 followed by bishop f4 earlier. I see, but it's I, fine. I see what he's trying to do here now. Yeah, he's attacking something, yeah? Uh, His knight on e4 is attacking your bishop. So you probably want to go with the bishop to the center. But then he can he can he can fork me here. He can fork my shit. Um I'm not sure if it's that good for him. Let's let's just go back with the bishop and uh, see All if right. um if he can do something. Because right now the knight on f3 protects from the fork, right? Ah. Uh. Okay, so right. he has to take on f3. Let's calculate. Knight takes f3, you take with the bishop, right? Okay, he didn't do it, so this is fine. You know now what, what we want to do is exchange pieces because we are up material, yeah? Yeah, but I don't want to I don't want to get forked down here. So you're right, you're right. So we need to be careful, but I can exchange this one. Yes, that's correct, but now maybe you can try to Try to avoid uh, this fork by moving your queen to a more central square. I can dig but, it. I can dig but it. you need to be careful. Yeah, it's there are some pieces like that might be captured at some point. But as long as we don't make terrible moves and identify the threats, we'll be fine. I need to worry about my time here too. You're right. But until you have like two and a half minutes, we're fine. Let's focus. We're an exchange up. We can do it. Okay, he's threatening your rook. You can bring it. To the most active square. Do you see what it is? Yes. So the most active square. And usually rooks are very happy when they're on the seventh rank, right? They are, yep. Yes. Uh, if you have two rooks on the seventh rank, it's almost game over I don't, strategically. I don't like his knight there. Okay, there we go. Okay, he doesn't like it also for some reason. He's threatening something though. Be careful. He's threatening my queen. 
Okay, just move with tempo if you can. Nice. And probably after he moves the bishop, you're going to want to develop your rook from f1. He's been waiting to join the game for a very long time. Yep, this is true. Okay, but now be careful. He wants to take your rook, right? He does. How the, and, fuck, uh, how the fuck do I stop that? Um, you can capture the bishop with a knight. Oh, that's true. But unfortunately, now after queen captures, the rook is uh, trapped, but you have to capture the knight probably. So you, you, ca you sacrifice a rook for a knight and a pawn, you only lose one point. You minimize the loss. Why didn't I take the, the bishop there instead? The knight was protecting it, unfortunately. So yeah, now you can take with the queen. It's not protected. And we are a little bit stressed with time. Well, and the guy is very fast, and I have to admit, he defended quite heroically. So let's notice if he has some hanging pieces. Okay, so do you see? Can you capture something? Uh, I can. Okay. You're attacking his bishop. <sighs> all right, all right. So now he has no threats, as far as I can see. Let's make a window for the king on the h file. You don't want to open the diagonal for his bishop. So uh, you want to make a window on the h file. Okay. Because uh, he might have some tricks. Okay, now he has a nasty threat. You, I will tell you what it is. It's bishop takes g2 check. Do you see it? I do, yeah, but why is that so nasty? Because the rook on c7 will take your queen. It's a discovery for the rook. Uh... So you can get... The, um, okay, this works by a miracle, but this is... You could have taken... With the queen on d4, probably. Okay. Just okay. getting away from the threat. But of course, with the time. No, play queen ba check. You have to play queen ba check to avoid losing the queen. And then you have to pre move, probably taking the bishop. You don't have a lot of time. And maybe because of the time situation, yeah, we have to rush. So you can take the. Ah, oh, man. This is a good idea, but. God damn it! <laughs> but you know tall my prophylaxis man it's not on point did i win the first game the... well um we won the first game we can resign yep, don't yep. worry we are facing really powerful opposition in this tournament and this is the only way to improve it's so in chess. hard it's, this game is so yeah. hard man <laughs> all right yeah it's it's not hard to i don't think it's hard to um to go from really bad to decent, but it is exceptionally hard to go from decent to, to good and then to very good and then to... Yeah, it's, exactly. It's so difficult. It's like climbing the mountain Everest. Um, and like the higher you are, the, the thinner the air, the more difficult it is. Okay, so yeah. so I don't want to do any fried liver shit here. How do I... Oh, nice, nice. So knight g5 is the fried liver attack. So your queen kind of prevents it for now. So you can, this is called a move order trick. Normally you, you develop the knights first, but in this case, you can develop the bishop first to the center and thus preventing the fried liver attack. So this is a pearl of wisdom that uh, probably you can use. The fried liver is, I, I, I used to have fun playing defense, but I, don't, I can't, I'm out of my element. Yeah. I haven't played it in a while. Not easy, not easy. All right, we're going to do I this. also prevent it. So, by the way, move orders in chess are probably the most difficult part to master, at least for me and many other grandmasters I talk to. And uh, this is a good move, but I prefer to develop first. Okay, so you would have pushed uh, uh, this this guy here, I'm guessing? Exactly. All right. All what right. a nice way to communicate. You make the move and I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I feel... <laughs> so, yeah. So now he's pinning you, which is... Of course, annoying to some extent, but you can uh, first um, make a window for your king with a tempo, if you know what I mean. Oh, I know and, what you mean, Tal. I know what you mean. Yes, exactly. And now, because you didn't castle, that's very important, you can afford to play the move g5. And uh, this move g5 to unpin is very, very dangerous if you castle. But now you can avoid castling short and develop the other pieces. So for example, you can get the bishop to the center or to pin him on g4. I'd Both are I'd fine. I'd rather do that. Yeah. And um, the key is that 
now you have more space on the king side. His bishop on g3 doesn't really do much. It's facing a barrier of two pawns. And yeah, suddenly everything is, is rolling for black. So this is good for me, you'd, you'd say? Um, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Personally, I prefer bishop g4, but it's not necessarily a better move. It's just uh, that I like annoying my opponents. And a pin is annoying. To deal with at least so this is true this is true yeah by the way some of the improvement in chess of course in posing in in terms of posing problems to the opponent rather than playing the best move and being able to spot like which moves are more annoying to the opponent is uh probably a very fun quality to to possess actually yeah you know what i i do like well, I mean, he would have just he would have just pushed his a pawn or his h pawn, right? H three, and then just booted me off that. Yeah, but then I would have played bishop h five. Oh yeah, that's true. I should have done that. That would have been annoying. That pin would have been annoying. Exactly. And okay, so now you know what to do. And your king is seemingly open, but you can castle long. I can. Yeah. By the way, one of the very advanced principles that, or at least the rules of thumb that uh, they teach you in chess when you're on a high level, is that the king in the center uh, is standing well because he can castle to both directions uh, if necessary. And it, it, okay, let's deal with with his threat first. So he wants to take your pawn. You don't want to allow opening his h file. So probably. Keeping it closed somehow will be a good idea. Nice. He will probably go knight h2 and attack. No, it doesn't. Okay, no threats. No threats by him. So you want to develop your queen. Well, Both squares I, are fine. I'm gonna do this one. Line him up yeah. with my line him up with my bish. So now he's attacking your bish. What can you do? We want to save the bish. Well, um, what we can do is fall back. Yeah, but which square do I want to go to? I'm going to do here. I think both are fine. Okay. But uh, yeah, I mean, a5 is a tempo that he can have. I'm not sure if it's good for him or not. So as long as you fall back with the bishop, it's uh, you're fine. You're doing fine. Okay, now you go here. And... Probably, As I was saying, probably castle, right? Wait, wait. You can castle, but I was saying earlier about this advanced idea that castling is okay. Of course, you want to do it, but then he has a target. He knows where to attack your king. So theoretically, if you castle and he castles short, he could start uh, uh, get his pawns rolling your side. So I prefer to be more flexible. So a good move would be to ask yourself which piece can you improve now very effectively. I see a very nice move. I don't want to say it outright. D5. But I'll just say that um, it's one of your pieces. You can improve it. And uh, it's a F8. very juicy square. It's just you can only spot it by intuition because normally you don't put pieces away from the center. But knight I feel to, like... Knight to h5. Exactly. Uh, and uh, I saw it it's the a whole very time. nice move. It's a very annoying move to face because you're not threatening anything direct. But it kind of annoys the hell out of him. Because he can't castle, for example. You see? Yeah. There will be a pin on the on the diagonal. So he castles long. And now it's much safer for you to castle long. You see what I did there? No. So he, now after you castle long, it's not necessarily the, the, the best way to play, but it was kind of a good idea to, to avoid uh letting him castle short and attack you on the king side with the on the queen side with the pawns so now because his king is in the same direction he cannot do it so now he has a threat he wants to take your pawn i'll repeat it later um and you can just protect it somehow while developing a piece while developing a piece you you have two pieces that you didn't develop yet right well i got a rook here i got another rook okay okay all right i see what which you're... rook which rook? One of the most difficult questions in chess, once again. I don't... Similar to move orders. I don't know, man. Uh -huh. I don't know. I'm going to do this one. Wait, uh, wait, 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 wait. The open file is the guideline. Remember, have faith in the open files. I'm going to do You this. want one rook on the open file and the other one protecting the pawn. Exactly. I'm 
going to do that one. Yep. Exactly. And that's kind of uh, the difference that makes the difference. When you put the right rook on that square and the right move order, then suddenly your opponent will uh, have more problems to solve. And uh, about the castling that I said earlier, the fact that his king is on the queen side, is on c1, prevents him from l lashing at you with his pawns, because then his king will be open too. Yeah. So yeah, we waited that. for him to castle, and then we, we knew exactly where we, we want to castle. If at all. And, uh, well, it, it wasn't necessarily the best move right now, uh, uh, back when I said it earlier, but uh, it was important for me to mention this principle. So castling, you can postpone it by just a little bit to make sure it's uh, perfectly safe. Why don't I... Um... Just take his bishop off the board there with my knight. I'm going to just get rid of that. Take the bishop with your knight is possible, but it will help him a little bit. Because this bishop doesn't do anything. He's attacking uh, like uh, a wall, yeah? And these and these knights in these closed position are a little bit more valuable than these bishops, right? Mm, that's right, that's right. So you already know everything. I don't need to teach you. I'm just uh, pretending to know things. <laughs> But uh, I, I think like... I learned chess playing five minute chess in coffee shops. So, so I'm not my brain isn't wired to really fully think about um, yeah. all these questions that you're supposed to ask yourself. So is he threatened? Yeah. I don't see any threat. So might, Correct. As well, might as well get that rook over to that file, right? Perfect. Nice. You see, it was so easy to find this move now that you know how to how to think. And that's the key. I think uh, that. Some people can, might say that uh, you, you could be an intelligent person, and that's why you see these moves. But I think that most of the viewers can do it if they know which questions to ask. It's see, fairly easy. See, now, this looks sexy to me. Nice, nice. No threats. Once again, you improved the worst placed piece. Only this time you didn't do it verbally. You just subconsciously realized all these details, right? Yes. My, so... my, my brain is working so fast, I don't even understand it. <laughs> so uh, he'll move his queen and then again no threat by him but he, he might want to like I don't know he wants to open up his bishop by playing f3 but I, I really don't see a move for him I honestly don't see a move for him so you know what might, what might be a, a very lethal move that from practical point of view just simply improving your worst placed piece which is the rook on g8 so where can you put it I don't know. I'll give you a clue. Have faith in the open files. I'm already on an open file, though. Not with the G-Rook. Maybe push the pawn? Do I push the pawn? No, the, G, the Rook on the G file, on G8, is not on an open file because he has a pawn blocking him. So you can put both Rooks on the F file. Oh. OK, what if I do that, and then? And by the way, the reason I came up with this move is not because I felt it was right. Uh, it's just that I asked myself these questions, just like we, we talked about. I wanted to improve the G8 rook, and the open files are where rooks belong. So it's fairly easy to, to see it once you ask the question. OK, now, he has the semi-threat. Your bishop on a7 is kind of hanging, right? No, but I don't get Oh, my bishop? Oh, I see. Um, yeah, this was his entire game plan, <laughs> but why don't I just get, um, why don't I just get rid of him? Yeah, I'm gonna do it. Sure. Now it takes with the rook again. I don't see a direct threat, but you have to be careful because if you take his pawn with the queen, you will get forked. I will get forked. Um, forked by so I'll say the moves. If you play queen takes h4, he will have g3, forking the queen and the knight. Oh, we don't want that. Oh. Yeah, so a move that might be good is to continue your plan, exactly. I, why am I even talking? Why are you even here? I mean, I feel yeah, like I should... I mean, Do you want lessons I, from me? Because I can give... I can. Yeah. I have time. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I could have Yeah, played some chess on my own and maybe learn from... Or watch this stream and try to learn something. <laughs> so, let's see. No threats. Um, so now you want to open the file a little bit. 
this pawn on f3 is annoying you, right? A little bit. Yes, like is protected by another pawn. You can put pressure on it by first exchanging and then figuring out maybe how to put pressure. Like both rooks are attacking it. You just have to get the knight out of the way without losing it, of course. Mm -hmm. So, and normally in chess, I really, really like to go forward if possible. So how can you go forward with the knight? Simple. Yes, once you know what you want, then it's very easy to get it. Same. I think this said. particular one is only true in chess and not in... <laughs> because it depends on who you are and how much money you have. Yeah. By the way, some people in my chat say that there are 20... So one guy said it's 2200. And he is still learning a lot. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like you have to work that much harder when you're at that level to 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 continue forward progress. That's why, yeah. like, I just you, you, it's so hard to be good at chess and, and, unless you dedicate your life to it. You know. Well, it really depends because if you learn uh, how to ask the right questions and you have just a little bit of practice by playing and, and thinking and maybe going through your games afterwards a little bit and you will improve no matter what so it's I just feel, i feel like i'm getting worse as the as time goes on well but, mm, but then again i, I don't, disagree i don't play that much anymore so maybe that's probably why <sighs> well you've proven yourself wrong in this stream so far so all right so he's threatening my uh my pawn. Pawn. Let's yeah. talk about bitches. So, but you don't want to go backwards or play passively. And your threat seems a little bit more uh, sexy, right? So just yeah, just fucking go for it, huh? Yeah, yeah. Why not? Um. So you will probably take. We can anticipate it. We have only three minutes. Don't worry. No, let's it, anticipate. It. Oh, 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 oh. Never mind. I'm not. Never mind. If he plays Guruk takes h6, you can kind of um improve. A piece of yours. So, let's say you know the the sentence knights on the green are dim or or on the rim are dim, right? Is this how you say it? Yeah, a uh, knight on the rim is grim. Yeah, it's grim. Yeah, I don't, I, I can't speak English. So knight, the knight on h three was is bad, but now he has a threat. So be careful. He, he didn't take your pawn, so you can kind of defend it while uh, getting away from his threat. So uh, hitting two birds with one stone. Boom. Boom. Okay, all right. And uh, by the way, now that he doesn't have a knight on b3 because he went backward, backwards, uh, later on you can improve the knight from c6. But first, deal with his threat. He wants to take your knight, right? He does, yeah, but I... Okay, bring it to the center. Okay, all right. Bring it to the center. All right, and okay. And I didn't even notice that you're threatening his rook. I just wanted to get it to the center. That's one of the magic things about magical things about bringing uh, all the pieces to the good squares. The threats will happen naturally. If you I can, have to play. if I can get my my knight on c6 to uh, to d4, then I'm threatening a, a fork. I doubt he'll let me do yeah. that, but yeah. And you don't have to see it in advance even because as long as you keep improving your pieces, he will have trouble making a move. And uh, of, of course, now he missed uh, your threat. And yeah. There's not much left. Oh man, forgot to oh, tell you not to shit. rush. Oh shit! Oh, I missed it. Yeah. But but it's funny because I mean he's still in a little bit of trouble because you have two threats now. Yeah. <laughs> this this was a little bit deep, but unfortunately, if he plays rook takes f6, you're not in time to get the queen. But okay, just pre-move one of the captures. It doesn't matter what rook takes f6 or queen takes f6, so you can save time. Okay. And oh, um, pre pre-move enabled. Oh, there we go. I got it. I got it. All right. Nice. And we're probably gonna win by time, but just let's just avoid uh, rushing. Okay. Okay. So okay, he he kept missing your your threat, so you know what it is, right? Yes. All right. And sorry if I speak to you as if you don't see anything. I just do it also uh, like 
when talking to my grandmaster students. All It's right. Just, yeah. We're doing well great. Done. Well We're done. doing great. We're two out of four.